Whether your MacBook Air isn't charging, it's not outputting sound from the headphone jack, or the USB connection is wonky, the problem could be traced back to a single source, the I.O. board. And because the I.O. board is responsible for so much stuff, simply replacing it could save you from having to buy a whole new computer. Hi, I'm MJ with iFixit, and today I'm going to show you how to replace the I.O. board in a late 2010 MacBook Air. If you own a 2011 version of this computer, the process is remarkably similar. But of course, you're still going to want to follow the step-by-step -step instructions and the repair guide on our site when you're performing your repair. We'll even link to it down in the description to make it easy. For this repair, I'm going to need a plastic spudger, a T5 Torx driver, and a MacBook Air Penelope driver. Now, rather than using separate drivers, I'm just going to use our 54-piece bit driver kit because it has both the bits I'm going to need plus a ton more. I'm also going to use an anti-static wrist strap to protect my MacBook Air from any accidental electrostatic discharge during my repair, and a screw tray because it keeps all those teeny tiny screws nice and organized. Now I've got all of my parts and tools together, I can get started by taking out the 10 penelope screws that are holding the bottom case in place. Now that I've got all of those screws out, I can begin to remove the lower case by grabbing it right between the display assembly and the lower case and rotating it towards the front of the computer. Now that the lower case is removed, the very first thing we're going to do is disconnect the battery. And really, that should be the first step in any electronics repair because we don't want any residual electricity floating around in there while we're doing our repair. To disconnect it, we're going to grab the little pull tab and pull it out parallel to the logic board. You don't want to pull up vertically because that'll break the connector. Now that the battery is disconnected, I can disconnect the I.O. board cable, and for that, I'm going to use my spudger. Now that the I.O. board cable is disconnected, we have access to the fan cable that's connected via this teeny tiny little zip socket. I'm going to use the pointy end of my spudger to flip up the flap on the zip socket and then pull that cable right out. Now that the fan cable is disconnected, we can begin to unstick the gasket off of the fan. It's held in place by some adhesive, so all you need to do is, is gently lift it up and off. Now we have access to the three screws that are holding the fan in place, so I'll go ahead and remove those. Now that that last screw is out, the fan should lift out pretty easily. Now, the first step to removing the I.O. board is disconnecting all the tiny connectors that are holding it in place, and for that, I will again use my spudger. With all those cables disconnected, there's only one screw holding the I.O. board in place, so I'll go ahead and remove it. And with that screw out, the I.O. board should lift out pretty easily. Before I do that, I'm going to make sure to deroute this cable because I don't want to go ripping it off when I'm lifting the I.O. board out. And that's it. All I have to do is install my new I.O. board and reassemble my computer. Of course, you can find all of the parts and tools used for this and many other repairs at ifixit.com. And if you run into any problems during your repairs, there are lots of solutions in the MacBook Air Repair Guide on our site. If you want to stay up to date with all of the latest teardowns and repair videos, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter at iFixit, or like us on Facebook. Thanks for watching and happy repairing!